One thing I find incredibly interesting about antinatalism in general is that antinatalists seem to have self-elected themselves as experts and authorities on suffering. And apparently, one of the things that comes with this default position of self-elected authority is autocratic license to be the deciders of what's good and bad, what value is, what is most valuable, and what is ultimately best for all sentient life. And if you ever try talking with an anti-natalist and you tell them, look, I've had my fair share of pain and suffering. And based on my experience, suffering isn't that much of an outrageous aspect to justify ending my existence or the existence of all sentient life for that matter. They will scoff, dismiss you and disqualify your experience as being insufficient or unsubstantial. That's right. You can't come to any conclusion based on your own experience. Your experience cannot be trusted. Because you are too much of a deluded, unintelligent, irrational desire junkie to know how to correctly use your brain. You need an antinatalist to tell you what to think and believe. What the absolute truth is. And the one true correct way of finding the only solution. And if you try to flip the script on that and return the suggestion that perhaps their experience with suffering isn't that substantial, they accuse you of ad homing, claiming you have no right to imply anything. And how dare you make such a suggestion without knowing my personal circumstance? Yeah. There is no hypocrisy going on here. Because in case you didn't hear, you are deluded and they are enlightened. You are stupid and they are intelligent. They are rational and you are irrational. They have mastered desire, and you are a desire whore. So if you want to talk to an anti-natalist, you better get it through your thick skull. They don't need critical friends, because there's nothing to criticize. They're right, and you're wrong. Don't you get that? Antinatalism is completely infallible, an absolute ironclad philosophy with not even one hole in it. If there is a hole anywhere, it must be in your head, because antinatalism is an impenetrable fortress. It can't even be argued against because it's an absolute truth. And only a fool attempts to argue with an absolute truth. If all of this seems to be in the realm of surreal ridiculousness, that's because more than likely it is. Antinatalists have admittedly conceded that the philosophy is a hard sell. Not because your average normal human being who doesn't suffer more than usual won't take it seriously, but because the average normal human being is a stupid, selfish monster. Oh, yeah. Okay. If this is the case, then whatever the reason, 
it might be worth going out and talking to the people who actually suffer or have suffered more than usual. It would seem that this is your target demographic, would it not? So why not get a little consensus from the people who are doing the suffering? Antinatalists are always citing numerous horrors of the world to justify their assertions. So wouldn't it be prudent and conducive to the cause to behoove you to go out and talk to the people who suffer these horrors? Go out and talk to that guy who got run over by a car and is laid up in the hospital. Talk to Holocaust survivors, war veterans, people who lost limbs, eyesight, hearing. Talk to prison inmates, victims of abuse, people who have survived torture, famine, and genocide. Talk to the people who had the disease or are struggling with the disease. Talk to the people with disabilities and permanent injuries. Go out and talk to the elephant man. The often cited but never consulted poster boy for the undesirable human existence. Yes, you think his life is a sloppy, shitty, messy wad of shit. Not worth living. We get that. But why not try asking him if his life is a sloppy, shitty, messy wad of shit not worth living? Or would that be too much to ask? So it might be worthwhile to go out and actually talk to the people who are suffering. Instead of self-electing yourself as one in a position to decide what's best for them. go out and talk to the suffering and ask them two questions. One, if painless euthanasia was available, would they jump at the chance? And two, do they think non-existence via antinatalism is the panacea of suffering and therefore the proper course of action to follow? Go ahead and try it. See if you get a consensus. Because if you can't even rally the support from the ones who are doing the suffering, then antinatalism doesn't stand a chance. It's a cause that's dead in the water. Talk to the people who suffer. Nah. But you won't do that, will you? You'd rather be like a man that stands on a soapbox and preaches about what's best for women. Probably the reason antinatalists don't want to talk to the suffering is because they already know they aren't going to like the answers they get. Because by and large, the majority of people who actually suffer appreciate life even more and find other values in life beyond just suffering. So you're damn right, antinatalism is a hard sell. Not just because it's full of holes and grounded in a bunch of subjective opinions, but also because it's not presented in any kind of practical framework. Go out and live your life, have fun, indulge desire, but don't just have any more children. Impractical nonsense. As long as desire is in play, there's going to be reproduction. Perhaps if you encourage people to give up desire, you might get somewhere. But this is a point you are unwilling to concede. Suffering must go. Desire can stay. And somehow the babies will just stop through the intervention of intellect. That's nothing but impractical junk philosophy. And that's why it's a hard sell. 
if your average normal human being who doesn't suffer more than usual won't take it seriously, and your average normal human being who does suffer more than usually won't take it seriously, then who is buying into the hard sell of the antinatalist philosophy? It's people who are akin to the ones who are selling it. Depressed, alienated, spoiled, rotten, snot-nosed brats. Living in a privileged, free society that suffer very little, yet fancy themselves as authorities on what's best for all life, based on their fucked up, pessimistic, antisocial psychologies. Yeah, that's real legitimacy for you.